A couple of videos ago, I made a video about Penelope Whiskey. I said that after $100 million, uh, anything could happen, and they really showed up with a nine-year bourbon. Thankfully, uh, a lot of folks might expect that the, the shoe's about to drop or go on the other foot or the tables are going to turn and, and, and we're going back the other way, but no, uh, it's very much true. Penelope is still on an upward climb, and you guys, you guys were definitely wrong. Hey guys, Jay here from Whiskey Raiders, better known as Take. A little bit of a spicy intro, but it's super true. After the Penelope buyout, I heard all sorts of craziness about how Penelope was going to become the worst company ever, uh, how they had been sold out, how their prices were going to go up, age statements were going to go down uh, if they had them at all. And so when the nine-year bourbon came out, it was really interesting. They kind of bucked all those trends and a lot of people said, yeah, that's cool, but they're just trying to lull you. They're going to trick you just like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof did to us with the 13-year age statement and now dropping it back down. Well, thankfully, the mail came today. Inside of it was a bottle of Penelope, and I'm happy to say that you guys are still wrong because Penelope is back with an eight-year Tokai rye. Let's go ahead and get into this one. This is an eight-year rye. Uh, they made about 1,906 packs of it. That's just shy of 12,000 bottles, which tells you how limited a limited edition uh, whiskey really is. 12,000 bottles is pretty hefty, but still most stores will only get a case, maybe two at best if they've been good customers, uh, maybe a couple bottles if distribution in that state isn't uh, tip top. This is going to be priced at $90, I believe, $89.99. Uh, that's the suggested retail pricing, which means uh, that the producer has no control over the store. So they'll get priced at whatever you see that. But if you see it at 89 bucks, that's about as good as it's going to get, I presume. But what's most important here uh, is the whiskey itself. Now you can see I don't do any crazy coloring on my videos. Uh, this this has some nutty color to it. The original Tokai was six years old, if I remember right. This guy has been bumped up 53% ABV with an eight year age statement. This is part of their Cooper series. I believe it's the third release. And this obviously was distilled at MGP and bottled by Penelope, now owned by MGP. Uh, this is the first take, so let's go ahead and get into it. The bottle doesn't slow me down. Now, innovation is always a big part of a brand. Tokai is a sweet Hungarian wine. Uh, it can be made only in Hungary. A lot of people say Tokaji, which is how you know they haven't done a lot with Tokai. Uh, but Tokai is a pronunciation. This is a cool wine. We've seen it from a lot of other producers, namely Starlight's done a lot of Tokai. Uh, Penelope's done a release before. I've done some private selections of Tokai, and so have some of my friends. So overall, it's a very cool finishing element. It lends a nice like honeyed apple pear uh, with a little bit of nutty brioche breadiness and caramel to the whiskeys that finish in uh, Tokai cast, and it doesn't add a big deep color, so a lot of this is going to be coming from the whiskey itself. Before we get into the whiskey itself, there has been a lot of debate. Now that Penelope is owned by MGP, are they still considered a non-distilling producer, or are they still sourcing their whiskey or contracting it? And that is an interesting sort of debate. I would say that yes, <laughs> Penelope is very much a non-distilling producer, but more importantly, they're a brand owned by a producer. So I would say that much like Remus or Rossville, we would consider them house brands of MGP, and that's very much the same case here. Penelope is now a house brand of MGP. They're getting all of their whiskey from MGP, which means they're a brand owned by a producer. I think we can drop the NDP independent bottler thing because they're owned by the people who make the whiskey. And it's very clear uh, that they're getting very preferential access, which is a very good thing for all of us at home who like to drink good whiskey. As far as the whole like sourcing contracting thing, I think that's a silly debate because Penelope basically says we need X amount of barrels uh, of X or Y, and MGP says yes or no, or yeah, we have more, we need to get more, we need to make more, age more. It's a very internalized supply chain, and it's been moving that way uh, basically since the acquisition. Interesting technical talk out of the way, let's get into the whiskey. Uh, I'm really pumped about this. I love Tokai. I really like what Penelope is doing. They've gotten more difficult to get barrels from, which is tricky because it means potentially I should like it less, but uh, the, the truth couldn't be farther from the truth, right? We do a lot of picks with brands in their early years. We help them grow and we help them get to the point where they're in front of more eyeballs and all, all sorts of stuff like that. That is a good problem to have, in my opinion. It means they're successful and it means that when we do do picks, we still get to try some really cool stuff. Like I did a cast strength rosé recently, which was just ballers cool. I dreamed about that for years, especially since they released the original rosé cask. So I say everything is upwards, good words, if that's easy even a word, uh, it's trending, it's kind of rocket ship trajectory. I like what's happening in Penelope. I like that their prices are staying good. And for the most part, when they do a limited edition, they make 12,000 bottles of it. So there's hope for you and I to find one yet. So let's go ahead and dive on in on the nose. The nose is big and sweet. That that rye, and this is definitely that 95.5 rye. So that 95% rye, 5% malted barley mash bill from MGP. 
super rich, super uh, big, like heavy and dense and dark. There is a little bit of that like kind of honey pecan and like the almond, like slivered almonds and a little bit of honey and phyllo and like buttery pastry notes on the nose, but the rice spice does dominate. It's not too sweet, which is good because sometimes these heavy finishes and sweet wines can be a little sweet on the nose and we have to hope that the palate backs them off. And this is smelling really nice on the nose. On the palate, this guy, this has a lot of rice spice. This is heavy on the rye heavy herbal, heavy pepper, heavy ginger. It is kind of grassy. This is very much more of that dilly kind of style MGP rye, which is interesting. I haven't seen a lot of it lately. I've gotten more of the, like, the big brulee and brown sugar rye profiles, but this goes nicely with the Tokai. The Tokai isn't super strong. It's actually not as strong as maybe I would have liked. I love big sweet things, um, sweeter than most folks for the most part. So I think that this is balanced. This is going to be heavier on the spice. Uh, it, the sweetness comes on the back palate. We'll talk about it here on the finish, but overall, on the palate here, it is big and rich. It has a nice viscosity for 53% ABV. A lot of that's coming. There is good tannin. There's a good bit of wood, but there is a lot of rye spice too. So you're definitely going to need to have to enjoy rye to like this pour. But I think that if you've been on the fence or maybe want to try something that's like a heavy hit of rye or has a lot of that rye content, this would be a good segue as well. On the finish, the finish is where the Tokai shines most. So that, that herbal grassy rye character starts to fade and we get those big brioche notes, that big caramel, that little brulee. When you get like a like a nougat or the creme brulee, like, like the rich vanilla of, I don't know, it's not pudding, but you know what I mean. That all comes together. So it kind of leaves you with this sweet finish. It starts big, bold, almost punishing, powerful, like punchy and spicy on the nose. And it gets sweeter as it goes through, but it's very gentle. It's a very easy transition. Uh, the finish is really nice because you kind of forget about that bold rice spice. You're like, all right, I'm ready to go for another sip. Uh, and then you dive back in, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, it's still, it's still full of rye. So I'd say this is a definite win for the rye fans. If you're rye curious, I think a finished rye is a good way to kind of kind of dip your toe in that pool. And I think it, you know, 90 bucks is a little tricky, but overall this for what it is, it's an, it's an eight year rye with an expensive finish. Tokai barrels are not cheap. So I think it's worth every penny. I think it's justified. I think it's fair. I don't think this is a result of Penelope trying to price up goods because they can. I think it's because they're getting to use more premium products than they had access to before. Uh, Cause a lot of brands can't just go out and buy eight year rye and and fresh Tokai barrels. So it's not something everyone can do and it does come with a price. So I think the price increases we may see on new products for Penelope come with access to better products that are just inherently more expensive. Overall guys, uh, this has been a first take review. This is a really great bottle. I think it's going to open really nicely. So I'm going to give this a couple more tastings before we do another, uh, you know, another tasting and before I do my final tasting and get the review out there and stuff. But by the time this video publishes, hopefully it's out, you can find it on whiskeyreaders.com. But thank you guys for joining me today. My name is Jay, better known as Take for whiskeyreaders.com. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see other whiskey content, you can find plenty of videos here on the channel. Uh, so go ahead and hop on over, watch a different review or a different, uh, you know, a lineup or a different piece. And I will catch you guys here on the Whiskey Raiders YouTube channel for another whiskey video soon.